We continue to get you ready for the start of free agency, which kicks off next week with the legal tampering period on Monday. Players being released, players being signed, and a whole lot more. That all comes up on Friday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast for March 8th, 2024. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. The autumn wind is a raider. Pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. And won. And won. And won. And welcome in Raider Nation to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast to get the latest edition of the show as soon as it becomes available. As always, if you're checking us out on YouTube, thanks so much. We appreciate that. Show continues to grow each and every day in a major way, not just baby steps, but in a major way. And that's because of you, Raider Nation. And of course, my man Ari, who does a great job each and every day getting us up on YouTube, making sure we're looking good and we're sounding good. So we definitely appreciate Ari. Hit him up on Twitter at Ari producers you can hit me up as well at your boy q254 and we got the lockdown raider podcast voicemail line 707-654-4693 a lot of calls and texts coming up in segment number three of today's show a lot of feedback that we've been getting on a lot of different subjects so we'll try to get as many in as possible as we close out the week really strong and heading to the weekend and get you ready for the start of free agency come monday so calls and texts segment number three segment number two i want to take you inside the conversation i had with brian billick the super bowl winning head coach with the baltimore ravens had this on my radio show just a couple days ago but wanted to bring it to the table because it was kind of a blueprint to the offseason and i always have respected the baltimore ravens and their front office the ozzy newsome while he was the man did a great job of course eric DaCosta is the guy there I think that they always have a lot of talent and their philosophies aren't really some kind of scientific equation, right? It's not that really difficult. It's pretty basic the way they break it down. But I think it's good to kind of go over the checklist and listen to the checks and balances of what should go on in an offseason if you're trying to maximize and make your roster the best way it can be. So Brian Billick, the Super Bowl winning uh, head coach of the Baltimore Ravens, join my radio show. You'll hear that conversation in segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Here in segment number one, news and notes of the day, as I always do, and we'll jump into it after I tell you about the title sponsor of the show, which is Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. We'll tell you a lot more about them later on in the show. But off top, I want to start off with Steve Weiss from the NFL Network. He's a guy that I had on my radio show as well on Wednesday, the same day that I had Super Bowl winning coach Brian Billick on the show. But And you heard a little bit from Steve Weiss on Thursday's show just talking about Jaden Daniels. Wanted to take it a step further since we did talk about Antonio Pierce, you heard that conversation on Thursday's show, talked about AP and the effect that he could have on free agency. And free agency is going to be a big deal for the Raiders starting next week on Monday when they have the legal tampering period open up. I think they're going to be very aggressive. I think you're going to see the Raiders land, uh, not I want to say a bunch of players, but some significant players to add to the roster. I think you're going to see that pretty early starting next week. And so I threw the question out there and kind of talked about it in segment number two about the Antonio Pierce effect and how he could help you know the attract free agents to the silver and black because well guys around the league are seeing what the Raiders are doing led by Antonio Pierce and they want to be a part of that so I asked Steve Weiss from NFL Network about that so it starts off with me asking just if the Raiders are more attractive location for free agents because of the presence of AP and then I ask a question about Tom Telesco as well really good stuff from Steve Weiss from the NFL Network check it out a lot of players love what Antonio Pierce is doing obviously the Raiders locker room loved Antonio Pierce how much do you think his presence is going to make the Raiders uh, a, a more valuable place to to be a de- you know free agent destination? Well, that's a great question because, I mean, I think Antonio, his staff having a really good GM like Tom Telesco, who, who put a roster together like he did with the Chargers, I, you know, I think the combination plus being a Raider, there's always a mystique to that, mm-hmm. um, even for younger players, could really help. Uh, you know, money always speaks bigger than anything, um, but I think... I think Antonio, the way he keeps it real with guys, the fact that he's a former player and that he rallied the team the way he did at the end of the season, I, I think that absolutely could help uh, you know, the Raiders become a free agent destination, you know, along there with Houston and, and maybe a couple other spots. You mentioned Tom Telesco and the rosters he was able to put together with the Chargers. Of course, Raider Nation is just getting familiar with Telesco. What is the biggest qualities that he brings to the table as a GM? 
he is, you know, you hear a lot about even keeled, even handedness. He's very thoughtful in his approach to player acquisition. And you saw a couple of years ago, they went in on the draft. They did, they, they, they really improved their offensive line. They went out and got the, uh, the center from the Packers and really helped the center position. And then next year they went all in free agency on defense mm-hmm. and they got really good players. It just didn't work. Right. It didn't work. You know, they've, they've got talent there. They just couldn't find a way to keep those guys healthy together. That was a huge issue there. So I, I think Tom Telesco being in the league as long as he has, being around some really smart people, um, has a very, very well thought out and, and, and just a very strong approach to player acquisition, how to position money, how to look a year or two down the line. Just, just a really, he, he's one of my favorite general managers. And again, I think, the fact that he's pretty open and pretty transparent about how he handles his business as well is, is going to make him fairly popular among media and fans. So I thought that that was significant. You know, you heard what he said about AP and the free agency. Obviously, it's always going to boil down to money. You know, how a, a, a team is going to use a certain player, how the fit is. I mean, that's that's going to matter the most. But I do think that there is a lot of buzz around the silver and black. And that's because of AP and what he's doing and, you know, kind of the media tour that he was on and the way that players gravitate to the guy. Right. I mean, it's funny. You think about the situation going on in Denver. You Think about Sean Payton and the way that he uh, basically undressed Russell Wilson on the sideline, just really got after him in that game late in the season and how bad that is. Players don't like to be talked to like that anymore. And AP has a way of relating to players. And I think that you're going to start to see more coaches, head coaches like AP, like Dan Campbell, like D'Amico Ryans, as opposed to like Sean Payton, who will just publicly berate guys like he did with Russell Wilson, regardless if Russell deserved it or not. He probably didn't deserve it in that type of fashion. So uh, and then I also thought there was a pretty good comment about Tom Telesco and the fact that, well, Steve Weiss said that that's his favorite GM for what he's able to do. So I know Raider Nation is kind of on the fence because of the lack of success that the Chargers have had, but Tom Telesco has done one thing for the Chargers. That was bring in talent. Now, they weren't able to take that talent and cook it up and uh, turn it into a winning product, but there's definitely talent on the roster, and hopefully – Tom Telesco is able to do the same thing with the silver and black. Regardless of what he does in the first round, uh, you know that the draft is important. You know free agency is important. So I uh, want to see what he's able to do. But I thought that was all some good stuff from Steve Weiss from the NFL Network. Also, as far as free agency goes, contracts have been agreed to. Uh, obviously, you can't sign from outside of your building right now unless they're, uh, you know, they've been released and they're no longer on rosters. But uh, you can sign guys that are on your team, and that's what the Chicago Bears did on Thursday when they came to agreement with their franchise tag holder, Jalen Johnson, the cornerback. He was a guy that I had looked at and said, man, if the Raiders can get their hands on him, that would be great. Uh, I liked him coming out of high school in Fresno, liked him coming out of uh, college at Utah. Uh, the Chicago Bears drafted him, and uh, he was the guy that they held the franchise tag with, and he ends up signing a four-year, $76 million deal with $54 million in guaranteed money. That happened on Thursday, and the good thing about that is he gets most of that money up front, and by the time that contract is over, he's only 28 years old, so he has an opportunity to sign another contract. So big ups to Jalen Johnson. Chicago was not going to let him out of there. They've signed three big-time contracts now on the defensive side of things, so they're trying to get things turned around quick, fast, and hurry. And remember, they hold the first pick overall and the ninth pick overall in April's upcoming draft. So they can get things turned around in Chicago. And oh, by the way, what are they going to do with Justin Fields? Also, the Rams re-signed guard Kevin Dotson to a three-year, $48 million deal, including $32 million guaranteed. He was a guy that I thought potentially could hit free agency, maybe a guy that the Raiders would be interested in, uh, you know, making him an addition to that Raiders offensive line. He is now off the, off the market. Again, three years, $48 million deal, including $32 million guaranteed. The Chiefs, uh, they gave linebacker Drew Tranquil a three-year, $19 million deal with 13 fully guaranteed. Uh, the big deal there is Chris Jones. The Chiefs are trying to get Chris Jones signed. He had tweeted out a picture of him in Big Red, Andy Reid. And so I think that that basically is letting it be known that he's going to be back. We'll find out sooner rather than later when it comes to Chris Jones. But it looks like he'll probably be back. Uh, But they're starting to put their pieces back together. Linebacker Drew Tranquil, one of the first guys, three-year, $19 million deal. 13 fully guaranteed and a little bit of a smaller note uh the saints keep one of their most important players on defense the honey badger tyron matthew he gets a two-year 13 million dollar deal to stay in new orleans how about a guy released a pretty big deal released justin simmons i was kind of surprised to wake up to this on thursday and see that the broncos are releasing all pro safety justin simmons after eight seasons in denver's moving on from simmons 
He went to the Pro Bowl last season, will save the Broncos $14.5 million against their salary cap. Uh, since entering the league in 2016, no player in the league has had more interceptions than Justin Simmons with 30. Think about that. 30 interceptions since 2016, leading the league ever since then in picks. So that's a guy with production. I don't know where he's going to land. Uh, I know that the Raiders have Marcus Epps and Trayvon Merrick. Now that's the guy that I'd probably be interested in the Raiders going after if they you know, could, could go ahead and get on the phone with him and see what can happen. And maybe a guy that they start to look at when uh, the legal tampering period opens up come Monday. We'll see how it goes. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of teams interested in Justin Simmons' service, but because the Denver Broncos are trying to get their salary cap in space, in place, uh, they had to release a very talented guy. They've already uh, taken all that dead cap hit for Russell Wilson, who, by the way, he's supposed to be meeting with the Pittsburgh Steelers, so he's already on his free agency tour. Uh, not that I'm pushing him off on the Raiders, but just to keep you up to date on what's going on with him, he potentially could be you know, off the market sooner rather than later, even though I think he's going to take his time. But, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens in Denver. I feel like it's going to be a big purge. Jerry Judy could be on his way out of there. Patrick Sertan could be on his way out of there. And Justin Simmons is out of there already being released on Thursday. And one more little note for you here is segment number one of today's Lockdown Raiders podcast news and notes of the day. My guy Vinny Bonsignor was a guest on my radio show on Thursday. He brought up the date March 10th. And why is that significant? Well, that was the date last year that the Bears traded their number one overall pick to the Carolina Panthers. So uh, he's assuming that because that's right before free agency opens up, before the legal tampering period opens up on the 11th, which is Monday, that you know, you might want to kind of pay attention to what's going on, what could potentially happen today or throughout the course of this weekend where there could be some trades in the draft. Maybe the Raiders make a, a trade and it would make sense. And his reasoning was because the Raiders want to know what they're going to be able to do or what they need to do in free agency. So it would be good for them and any other team that's going to try to make a trade in the in the draft to go ahead and, and get the parameters of that worked out ahead of time before free agency opens up so they know exactly what direction to go. If the Raiders are trying to move up the draft board and go get a quarterback regardless of who that's going to be and no matter how high it's going to be if they're going to make that move they need to know sooner rather than later or else they're going to have to go after a quarterback in free agency maybe a Russell Wilson maybe a Justin Fields maybe a Kirk Cousins any of the guys that could be available they may have to go in that direction if they can't get a trade so he uh, was very adamant to say just kind of pay attention to March 10th and see what happens. Now, that doesn't mean something's going to happen, but that's a date that I'll be definitely paying attention to. Well, all weekend long, I'll be paying attention to see what goes on if the Raiders make a trade or any other team in the league makes a trade to try to get up the draft board in the first round at the end of April, April 25th. So that's all I got for you for segment number one of today's Locked On Raiders podcast news and notes of the day. Coming up in segment number two, you'll hear from the Super Bowl winning head coach Brian Billick. He won that Super Bowl with the Baltimore Ravens. Just want you to hear what it's like to kind of go into an offseason you know, with a really good front office like the Baltimore Ravens have and had when he was there under Ozzie Newsom. So I thought it was some really good stuff that he had to say on my radio show, and I want to pass that along. We'll do it in segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Before we get to that, though, I do want to let you know about Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you could still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as, as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves ri including, risk including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood, Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC, is a registered broker-dealer. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. I want you to hear the conversation I had, I believe, on Wednesday on my radio show, Unnecessary Roughness, on Raider Nation Radio 920. Had an opportunity to catch up with a former Super Bowl. He's not a former Super Bowl uh, winning coach. He won the Super Bowl. Super Bowl winning head coach Brian Billick, again, on my radio show. Just wanted to get into all things offseason. Again, the Ravens and their front office is one I've always really respected. There's certain teams that just get it, and there's certain teams that don't. 
I would love the Raiders to be the team that you start to talk about each and every year where they just get it between free agency, the draft. They just know how to put rosters together. They've got to do that consistently before we could talk about that. That hasn't happened with the Silver and Black. But the Baltimore Ravens, they are a team that has consistently had really good rosters and know what they're doing as they're putting those rosters together from a front office to a coaching staff and all that. So here's my conversation with Brian Billick from Wednesday on my radio show. We start off talking about putting together an offseason plan and an offseason checklist. Coach, when you get into the offseason, uh, what is the kind of the checklist look like for a coach and a GM and a team as they're trying to plan for the upcoming season, the draft and free agency? Yeah, it's an amazing process. I, I remember joking with Ozzie Newsom um, uh, back. Uh, we crossed paths and in, in, uh, in the airport after one of the uh, playoff losses, and and uh, visit with him, going, "Oh, it's a great season, Ozzie. Uh, combines in two weeks." <laughs> you know, you turn you turn right around, and it now began as we began just with the the combine, just a steady march towards the season, the NFL really brilliantly in terms of the way it kind of doles out this NFL news for the, for the junkies that want to hear everything, because we begin with obviously got the combine going on right now. Free agency now kicks in just about the time you start getting into the uh, visitations of the uh, draft choices and going out to their schools. Uh, then we have the draft and then you transition into OTA. So it's that, that constant, you know, progression step by step, having just finished the combine, now getting knee deep and trying to address your free agency needs, which are so important because you want to make sure you get done in free agency. Those things that you need to do that free you up to draft the best player available. You know, everybody says that's what they do. We take the best player available. But the fact of the matter is that many times you're going to, you're going to stretch that best player to what your particular needs are. So when you can satisfy those for the most part, in free agency, it really does free you up then to go uh, after that best policy of taking the best player available in the draft. You know, you mentioned just coming off the combine and we were there in Indianapolis last week. How big of, uh, I guess, stepping start, not a stepping point, but like as a starting point is that for the off season as you prepare for the draft? Like how much does the combine mean? Well, it, it's, you, you, it's one of, of a lot of factors that yeah. in the mix. Uh, and it's really the first time the coaches – now can pour themselves into looking at the upcoming coming class. I mean, mm-hmm. they've gotten into the film a little bit. Uh, the combine for me was always one that uh, the main purpose was to send me back to the film. In other words, right. it was one of three types of players. It was the kind of player that you loved them on film, you see at the combine, the athletic ability you see fo- follows up with that. Okay, good. I can check that off. The more difficult one is the player that you loved on film, but then you get to the combine and you just don't see the same athleticism, or vice versa, a guy that you didn't care on film, but, boy, you see at the combine, he really does some things. In both instances, I loved it when it's, okay, make me go back to the film. Make me go back and and reiterate that, that, yeah, here's what I like about this player, or, no, no, even though he looked really good at the combine, I don't like what I see on the film. I don't see it translating into the film. So that's really the the, the main purpose of the combine to me is to send me back to the film to to either change my mind or reconfirm what I thought I already knew. Brian Billick is with us here on Raider Nation Radio 920. Unnecessary roughness as you and Ozzie Newsom were sitting around and trying to collaborate and put this team together. And I've always respected the Ravens front office. Always thought you guys did a hell of a job getting the best talent. How much back and forth is there between GM and head coach? Well, Ozzie Newman, Newsom, who I, I don't know that you can go to the Hall of Fame twice, but you ought to be able to. <laughs> right. He's in there as a, as, as a player, and he should be in there as a GM as well. The strength of Ozzie Newsom was the fact that his ability – Ozzie's one of the best listeners I've ever been around and was always soliciting comments from assistant coaches, uh, 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 scouts as well, and, and kind of putting guys together. Uh, in different combinations, you have your area scout, and you have obviously you have your position coaches. But then he'll take a, a, an area scout and 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 uh, uh, and say and match him up with a position coach and say, okay, I want you to look at this player in this other area. Always looking for that perspective. Always listening uh, for different perspectives on it. And that, that's the strength, I think, of what they do in Baltimore is that it's a very eclectic open process. Obviously Ozzie and now Eric DaCosta, mm-hmm. um, you know, have to make the final call, 
but a very open, collaborative process. It always seemed like Baltimore got it, right? It was always one of those where whenever a guy was drafted, I would always look back at Baltimore and say, yeah, of course they got that guy. And maybe they got him in the third round, but of course they got that guy because, well, that's just the Baltimore Ravens. Why is it some front offices get it and it seems like they hit more times than not and and other front offices seem like they just are always swinging and missing? You know, it's it's odd to, to, to hear this, uh, I'm sure, because you think, well, why wouldn't everybody do that? But it really is. There's only, you know, a, a handful of teams that really do have a clear and identifiable vision for what they want in their players. Now, you'd think everybody would do that, but that goes back to that collaborative mission that uh, Ozzie Newsom and now Eric Acosta put the coaches and the, and the scouts on in terms of, uh, and, and again, countless hours talking about, well, what, what do we need in this position? What are the physical attributes of this position versus that position? Uh, and then obviously the personality, does he fit into the Raven way? And then you stay true to it. And that's hard because there's going to be times when an athlete presents himself with, you know, really great ability and, and you just become enamored with what he could do. But at the end of the day, the consensus is he really doesn't fit what we want or what we do, whatever that reason may be. And then you straight stay true to it. You stay true to the board. That's the other thing that you hear all the time that people, well, we took this player. He was the highest rated player at our board. And half the time that's a lie because they're (laughs) stretching for what they need. Uh, But that's, Staying with your board because you put a lot of time and effort into the board and saying, okay, this is the way we think they are. And this player, and that's tough too. You know, early on, it's easy. I mean, the difference between the 15th ranked player and the 20th ranked player may be substantial. Mm. But it's, what's the difference between that 65th player and the 75th player, the 100th player and the 150th player? Sometimes that's very, very narrow. Sometimes the differences are very, very narrow. So you really have to have a firm idea of is this, what are we looking for in this position uh, by this player? Coach Brian Billick is with us here on Raider Nation Radio 920. Unnecessary Roughness. We've got free agency starting next week. The tampering period starts on Monday. Uh, what's the philosophy for a head coach? What are you looking for in your free agents? Yeah. And by the way, I love that term legal tampering. <laughs> right. <laughs> The fact that they've come around, because people are doing it for years, so now they say, well, just keep doing what you're doing, but we'll make it legal now. So it's legal tampering. I love it. (laughs) Um, Yeah, as always, there's an attractive, and this year in particular, there's an attractive core of, I was just doing a a radio station down in Houston, and uh, talking about the running back, uh, free agency running backs, Barkley, uh, Josh Jacobs, obviously there with the Raiders, Tony Pollard, Derek Henry. Austin Eckler, that, that's some attractive talent uh, that, uh, at a position where that is, is you know, it's, it's a very affordable. You know, I know they're all upset that running back position doesn't garner more, that the cap space, or I should say the franchise number is so low. Uh, but there's some, cal- you know, you, you can help yourself in that position this year in, the, uh, in free agency. I, I look at the wide receiver. Uh, now, a lot of them are getting gobbled up, you know, because you had T. Higgins and Pittman and, and Evans and Marquise Brown and, and Calvin Ridley, and some of them are getting signed back. But there, there's some players that are available. You just have to be careful that you're not that team that thinks, you know what, that goes chases that one player say, thinking, well, we're just that one player away. Well, if you think you're that, you're, you're probably not, and you're going to waste the money. Uh, right. So you have to be very strategic about the way that you use your free agency money. But as I said, the key is – is to approach free agency in a, in a smart, practical manner that frees you up to truly take the best player available in the draft so that you don't make the mistake there and reach for a player that, okay, our board says this, but we really need a wide receiver, so we're going to take a player a couple slots down because we have that need. Coach, you mentioned Houston and D'Amico Ryans, and I love what he's got going on there with the Texans, and it seems like players want to go play for him. We're here in Vegas. Antonio Pierce, he finished off the season strong. He earned the head coaching job for the Raiders. Seems like to me that players are going to go want to play for him as well. How much of a, an impact can a coach have on free agency and how many like players want to come play for that guy? Well, um, all things being equal, which is stupid because they never are. Um, Yeah, that can be a factor. But at the end of the day, the players, and I don't mean to sound cynical at this, 
if you pay them a dollar more, that's where they're going to go. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and that's basically what it is. And they'll say, well, I know I really love the coach and this, that, and the yeah. other. But you know, at the end of the day, they're going to go where they get the best contract because that, that, that's going to indicate to them how much you want me. Now, does does when you look and, and there are some equitable offers in there and, and you look and, and you look at some of the coaching situations and like you mentioned with D'Amico and, and I see what's going on in Las Vegas and, and that can be attractive to people. Certainly, yeah. And, and how you're going to be used. That's probably the other biggest thing is how are you going to use me? How are you going to put me in a position to get that next big contract? What did you see or what did you think of the way that Antonio Pierce went about handling his business as a first-time head coach and, like I said, earning that, that head coaching job? Well, and that's a tough position to step into, to take over a team in the latter part of the season. Um, there's only so much you can actually change. But to try to create a mentality, one that says, look, this is the way we're going to do business. He's obviously got a lot of experience. Uh, his background as a former player certainly helped him because he could draw on, because I'm sure he's been in that situation, he can draw on the experiences of, okay, how did I deal with this type of situation? What was important to me to try to rally that team around or recognize that that is a talented team? The job for them now really is is, is the quarterback position. If right. they can get that right, then then obviously the rest of those pieces can fall into place. Is there a quarterback out there, or a couple quarterbacks that you've got your eye on in particular? Well, you know, from the draft standpoint, that's really the more fundamental yeah. question you have to, to say is, okay, in what looks to be, we'll, we'll see as it actually turns out, but um, it looks to be a pretty deep quarterback draft. There are right now, what, five guys projected uh, to go in the first round, and, mm-hmm. and the great thing about the draft is, you know, particularly first round, it's a 50-50 crap sheet. Right. Uh, you take a first round quarterback, you got a 50 50 percent chance of being right, which means that whether you have the first pick, the fifth pick, the seventh pick, or the thirteenth pick, like like the Raiders, they have thirteen, don't they? Yep, yep, um, thirteen. Uh, you, you've got as decent a chance of picking the right guy. There again, you got to go back to your board. You got to go back to your analysis. Uh, you know, so if a guy like the JJ McCarthy be sitting there at thirteen, what do you think of him, I mean, Michael Penick? Okay, uh, Bo Nixon is the guy that is intriguing because he's a guy that could maybe fall into the early second round. Mm-hmm. So what's your conviction rate in terms of how you feel about these guys? Uh, and are you willing to you know, put your organization on that path? Or uh, do you decide, you know what, we've got a pretty good pick. We can add to this team and go after a guy like Russell Wilson, uh, which would be an interesting choice for, for the Raiders if they went with Russell Wilson. Coach Brian Billick is with us here on Raider Nation Radio 920 Unnecessary Roughness. Just got a couple more questions for you. Uh, I did want to ask you about Russell Wilson. What do you think about him? Denver has let him go, let him, allowed him to go try to find a new home. Uh, what do you think ultimately ends up happening with Russ? You know, again, for him, the key is to find that right fit. Um, and I still think Russell Wilson can be a dynamic player. Um, what he did in, in Seattle was unique. You know, it was always really great defense, ran the ball, and the, what they asked Russell to do, particularly in the passing game. He, he, he's not going to be a, you know, nickel and dime, drop off here, read this, go to that. It, it, he's going to be the big plays. He's going to make some plays with his legs and buy some time. You've got to crack. And they didn't do that in Denver. Uh, and, and I still think that's in Russell Wilson. So if he goes to the right place and they craft the right thing around him, then, yeah, I still think he can be a dynamic quarterback, uh, and, and particularly on a good team, and, and he's been there before. Uh, it's hard for me to believe that he's indeed just uh, lost it and is over the hill. I think it's more to do with – I think there's still more there, and if you wrap the right offense around him and the right system around him and utilize what he does best, obviously you've got to give him the, the talent around him to make it work. Um, that might be a good choice for the Raiders. So there you go. I thought that that was some really good, intriguing stuff from Brian Billick. Uh, Sometimes it's good to go behind the scenes and kind of see how the sausage is made, and that's what I really wanted to talk to him about. So hopefully you enjoyed that conversation as well. And we start to see what the Raiders do. Right, obviously, Tom Telesco and company, they've already uh, put together a lot. To, they've gone over the Raiders roster. They know who they want to bring back, who they don't want to bring back. They know where they have holes that they need to fill. Let's see how it unfolds and see what kind of habits the Raiders could start getting into. Again, Tom Telesco has brought a lot of talent to the Chargers. They just weren't able to put it together and turn it into a winning product. The Raiders have the coach that I believe in. 
I believe that AP could put it together as long as the talent's there. Can Tom Telesco get the talent to the silver and black? We'll find that out sooner rather than later. Matter of fact, starting as soon as Monday when the legal tampering period opens up. But that's what I got for you for segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Coming up in segment number three, your calls and texts draft that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Before we get to that, though, I do want to tell you about the title sponsor of the show, which is Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, theater events near you. They got great last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. And on top of that, you can see the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All-in prices show your total up front. You know you're getting a great deal before you check out, and you can buy tickets in seconds with two taps. Not only that, they've got deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last-minute seats. So you take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time right now. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use promo code LOCKEDON for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create that account. The promo code is LOCKEDON, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Here we go, Raider Nation. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Your calls and texts draft that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Let's start things off with a call from Sucker Free Raider. He's calling to hit us up with three quick topics. Nothing serious, just having some off-season fun. Keeping it light. Here he is, Sucker Free Raider. Yo, Q, what up? Sucker Free Raider, man. Look, Q, it's off-season, man. Let's have a little fun, man. Let's, let's not get too serious. I got three little things I want to touch on real quick. Um, the first one is, is uh, I heard a caller or something a long time ago uh, chime in and or, or something a text or whatever, but you were talking about like trying to get the uh, get it started in the in the uh, stadium after they say Raiders first down. Hey yay! Like Ice Cube, man, come on! Can we keep spreading that? Especially now that AP's the coach, can we keep trying to push that for for uh, for, for the nation? You know what I mean? Get get on one page. Uh, the second thing, real quick, man, I've been playing Madden, the video game, since. It, first came out ever and I've never been more excited to see a coach <laughs> you know what I mean they're gonna put they're gonna put a AP uh, next year on the mat and hopefully they got his black air force ones on there but yeah I ain't been juiced since uh, since they had Chucky come back on on the video game and then the last one is a little quick conspiracy theory I'm on to you Harbaugh I'm on to you your your little evil lab just hoping and wishing and praying we get McCarthy so you already get a you get a step up on us because you know the, the whole blueprint. I'm not falling for it. Out. Thank you for the call, my man. And, yeah, it's funny. It would be cool if Ice Cube's voice came on the speakers in the stadium, right? Did a little yay, yay. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. I think that's something that, I mean, the fans could get behind that, but I think it'd be something cool that you just heard over the speakers there in Allegiant Stadium. As far as Madden, I hadn't thought about that. You know, what? and what I mean by that is it's probably a cool moment for AP, right? I mean, he gets to see himself in a video game if, if in fact, he gets the game and even cares. But, I mean, that would be pretty cool. That would be pretty dope to see yourself in a video game, and you know it looks so realistic, so that would be pretty cool. Uh, as far as McCarthy, <laughs> maybe it's not a crazy theory. Maybe Harbaugh is trying to plant the seed on, on how good he is to get the Raiders or even Denver to bite. Look, the Broncos need a quarterback too, and, you know, he's a guy that's been linked to him, so maybe he's trying to get anybody in the AFC West to bite on uh, McCarthy and said, okay, I, I, know how to, I know how to beat that guy. It's not really actually a bad little kind of conspiracy theory that you threw out there. But Sucker Free Raider, thanks so much for the call, my man. It's great to hear from you. Up next, got a text from Heavy Chevy CB from the 5 and Dime. That's the 510. Good morning, Q. It's Heavy Chevy CB from the 510. I love the show. Still listen every morning on my way to work. Wanted to reach out and comment on this year's upcoming draft. I feel like as Raider fans, we have to be open to the idea that none of the quarterbacks we want to draft will be available to us. I don't see us moving up that high in the draft to get the quarterback we want. The price is just too steep for us this year. I really hope Tom Telesco, Coach AP, Coach Lewis, Coach Getze, and Coach Graham all sit down and come up with a plan A, B, and C. Not, co- not knowing Coach AP's contract is a big clue to what the Raiders are going to do this upcoming season. Is he a one-year prove a deal and has to go for it all, or is he on a five-year plan where he could build a team in two years? I don't know. If it's not a go-for-it-all season, I really think Tom Telesco and our coaching staff can really make some massive moves. Most of the teams in the top eight are going for quarterbacks. It means all the other best players from their prospective positions should be available. If we don't get a quarterback, these moves can at least help O'Connell for the upcoming season. I don't know, Q, when I start thinking about the draft and all the possibilities, it makes my head spin. Do you think there's a scenario where the Raiders do not get a quarterback in the draft? 
I really like Jaden Daniels as well, but I just don't see Tom Telesco's first order of business to give away our team's future for the next three years. Let me know what you think, Hugh. Go Raiders. That's Heavy Chevy CB from the Five and Dime. Thanks so much for the text. I appreciate you. Honestly, I think that it's going to be very important to find that quarterback. Uh, I know that Mark Davis was really stressing that to the GMs, uh, all the candidates, when they were coming in and talking to the Raiders and talking to AP. And I know AP is stressing it as well. Right, he wants to go and 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 go get somebody. As he said to us at the scouting combine in Indianapolis, you know, you know me, I'm a go getter, right? I mean, he he has faith in in Aiden O'Connell. He called Aiden O'Connell the starting quarterback, but he also said Aiden O'Connell knows he's going to have competition. Aiden O'Connell has said he knows he's going to have competition. So uh, I think that they are going to be very aggressive. I do believe that they're going to go try to move up and get their quarterback. But if they don't, in, in in your case, you know, the scenario that you threw out there, there's a lot of talent. You know, if they walk away from round one and they don't have a quarterback, but they have Byron Murphy, it's not a bad thing. If they walk away from round one and they don't have a quarterback, but they got Terry on Arnold, it's not a bad thing. If they walk away from round one, they don't have a quarterback, but they got the best offensive lineman like Joe Alt, also not a bad thing, right? I mean, so there's so many different scenarios. They're not in a bad position. I just know, and I feel like we know, as you know, Raider fans, as media guys, I think the team knows that it's been far too long since they've had that dude at the quarterback position. They finally need to go get that guy. Like AP said, no band-aids. They want to go get their guy that they know is going to be their franchise quarterback for years to come. And honestly, everyone says set back the team for three or four years. Look, you have more than just the first round picks, right? And the Raiders have done really well with picks outside of the first round. So even if they have to give up multiple ones, which I'm okay with, Okay, you still got the rest of the draft. You still have free agency. The salary cap goes up each and every year. The Raiders, as long as they do their salaries right, they'll have plenty of salary cap space as well to fill some holes. Think about the Rams. The Rams haven't had a first-round pick since the Jared Goff trade, (laughs) right? And they've been to the Super Bowl multiple times and won one, right? But they were able to hit on later-round picks. So, I mean, it's, it's... These kind of things happen, right? The Philadelphia Eagles, remember what they did? They traded up and then traded up again to go get Carson Wentz. They got to the Super Bowl. They won a Super Bowl. They've been to another Super Bowl. So, I mean, just because you trade up and you give away some of your first-round picks doesn't mean it's game, set, match. Look what the 49ers did. They gave up the draft capital to go get Trey Lance. He ain't even on the team anymore, and they've been to the Super Bowl multiple times, right? I mean, so it's just it, it's not it's not the end of the world If you give up some draft capital, go get the guy that you believe in, right? You just got to do it, right? You can't, I I say it all the time, you don't want to stand at the plate and strike out holding your bat in your hand. If you're going to strike out, strike out swinging, right? Don't go down with your bat in your hand. That's nothing, there's nothing worse than watching that go by and, and not being able to make that move. The worst move that you can make is the move that you don't make, as far as I'm concerned. So that's just me. We'll see what the Raiders and Tom Telesco do. But thanks so much for that. I do appreciate you. And again, there are other options if you don't get a quarterback. In round one. Up next, got a call from Wilmington, North Carolina. Don't have a name on it, but again, it's coming from Wilmington, North Carolina. He's calling to talk about his birthday, which is today, his nonprofit, International Women's Day, and also has some, or National Women's Day, and also has some Raiders talk for us as well. Here's the call coming out of Wilmington, North Carolina. Hey, yo, Q. uh, Appreciate everything that you do. Every time you drop something on YouTube, can't wait because I'm on YouTube every day and I'm like, Raider content all day, every day, and what you got is, uh, I'd say, A-plus material. Anyways, my man, I'm calling in from Wilmington, North Carolina. Today is March 7th. Tomorrow is my birthday. So March 8th, International Women's Day. If you got a woman in your life, make sure that you love on them tomorrow because tomorrow's that day. Anyways, I got two things that I would like to ask for because uh, it's my birthday, and I'm also an Air Force veteran. Uh, I would like for a shameless plug on your show because I would love the nation to get down on my little small business. Um, I'm an artist, and I started the skate shop, which is also a nonprofit. Uh, all the proceeds go to North Carolina Soup Kitchens because there's a lot of homeless folks where I live. And my business is called TerrettDex.com. Dex is spelled D-E-X, Delta Echo X-Ray. Anyways, what I would like to talk to you about is a couple of things. My man, this is not going to be a popular opinion, but I think we should trade Devontae Adams to the New York Jets. And what I want back is Sauce Gardner. 
And with that extra money, I want to make some extensions. I want to extend Jack Jones, Malcolm Coots, and Trayvon. Another thing I would like to do is I'd like to get Jamal Adams. The Seahawks released him, and I think he would be a big upgrade over number one, Trey R.F. And um, I know everybody's crazy about the free agency signings that are about to go down. And I'll tell you my number one free agent that I want is Leonard Williams. If you go all the way back to the days of the USC, he wanted to be a Raider. So let's put this man in the silver and black. Anyways, if I get on the show, yo, Raider Nation, stand up, baby, and just win. Happy birthday, my man. I appreciate you. Thank you for your services. I appreciate that as well. Um, now, there's a lot to unpack in that call, right? That was an action-packed two minutes and 20 seconds. Um, and I'm sorry, but there's not a lot of positive that I got to take away from that call. Um, the Jets aren't trading Sauce Gardner. They're not trading Sauce Gardner for Devontae Adams. They're not trading Sauce Gardner for any other wide receiver in the league. This is not going to happen, right? If they trade Devontae Adams or for a Devontae Adams, the Raiders might be able to get that number 10 overall pick. Might. I just don't even think that they would be able to do that. I think that the Jets would say, yeah, we'll give you a second instead of a first. And I, I just don't see, I'm not in the, ca- uh, the camp of wanting to trade Devontae. I don't think that that makes any sense at all. We're talking about going and getting a quarterback and the Raiders moving up the, the, the you know, the, the um, chart to go get, you know, in the list and, and going up into the draft order to go get their quarterback. You don't want to give away their best wide receiver. Uh, Jamal Adams, I was a big fan of his while he was a Jet. I really wanted the Raiders to make a move for him. Thought that he was that alpha dog that they needed. Good thing that they didn't listen to me, right? Because, man, he was nothing with Seattle. Seattle did not get the good end of that trade, right? So that's just one of those things. Jamal Adams just can't stay healthy, unfortunately. Again, like him a lot. Love his tenacity. Love the, you know, the energy that he plays with. Loves the, the way that he hits and, and gets after the quarterback. Not very good in coverage, but he's just, he's just not that dude, and he can't stay healthy. And so, you know, ability and availability, you know what that's all about. So he just doesn't have that. Uh, as far as Leonard Williams, again, liked him a lot years ago. I don't like this version of Leonard Williams. What I saw from him uh, when they traded him and he ended up in Seattle as well, not a whole lot. I mean, I, I like the idea when he was coming out of USC of, of the Raiders potentially getting him. They went with Amari Cooper and didn't get Leonard Williams. I just think that that, that good Leonard Williams is, is, is long gone, and really he can't do a whole lot for the silver and black unless you get him on a very cheap deal. I just don't see him making a whole lot of sense for the Raiders moving forward. But thanks so much for the, the call. Again, happy birthday, and thank you for your services. We definitely appreciate you. Nothing personal, just everything happened to be a no <laughs> on that call. But thank you so much. The next time you call, make sure you let me know your name, man. Shut your name out as well. Got a text from the 831. No name on this one either. Q, first listen since March of 2020. Get Daniels no matter what it takes. We haven't had our guys since forever. Our team is stacked on offense. Get a linebacker, defensive tackle, free agency. Chandler Jones, uh, not Chandler Jones, you. Chris Jones would do three things. One, solidify the D-line. Two, weaken opponent. Three, strengthen our secondary. Nothing is better for the secondary than less time to throw the ball. Keep the money on the quarterbacks low to strengthen the rest of the team. That's a text from the 831. And I think Chris Jones is going to return to Kansas City. But I think Christian Wilkins is a guy that's definitely in play for the silver and black. And that's an, that's an okay uh, option B. I think that that's really actually a really good option B. Uh, like I said, Chris Jones, I believe, is returned to Kansas City. Uh, Christian Wilkins is 28 years old. I'd be all for him, you know, uh, signing with the Silver and Black. And I think that he could do some really good things in the middle of that Raiders defensive line. You got Max Crosby, Tyree Wilson, Malcolm Koontz, and you throw Christian Wilkins in the middle, a guy that could definitely get after the, the runner and, and the quarterback, as he showed this last year, nine and a half sacks. Yeah, I'd be good with that. And everything that you said, strengthen the secondary, solidify the defensive line. And, well, he would, wouldn't weaken the opponent because he's not coming from Kansas City, but he would weaken the other opponents because he's well a, a force out there on the defensive line. Thanks so much for that. I do appreciate you. Got time for just a couple more. This call is coming from Wine Country Raider. He's calling to talk about players wanting to come to Vegas to play for the Raiders because of Antonio Pierce, a subject that I talked about on Thursday's show. What's up, Q? It's Wine Country Raider here. Just calling about your Thursday show and about uh, free agents wanting to come to Vegas. And uh, I think the obvious thing is, yeah, a bunch of players are seeing what Antonio Pierce is bringing to the Raiders and the vibe and and the style of play he wants. But I think another big thing is there's players who want to, who ring chase and they want to go play for, you know, the Kansas City Chiefs. They say, oh, I want to go play for the Kansas City Chiefs. But there's another style of player, which I think is way more fitting to what the Raiders are looking for, 
and those are the players who want to be the guys who take down the Chiefs. Like Max said, he wants to be the team to take down the Chiefs. And I think there's a bunch of free agents around the league who are in that same boat, especially some players who maybe have lost to the Chiefs in the Super Bowl a couple times, you know. Um, that's my uh, – that's all I got, really. You know, just uh, I I think that the Vegas is back to being a destination. Players want to play for the Silver and Black. We got the best jerseys. We got the coolest stadium, you know, the craziest fans. And uh, uh, I'm just excited that the Raiders are cool again. One country later out. Thanks for the call, my man. I appreciate you. I like that. Guys wanting to take down the Chiefs. I mean, I can see that being a part of it for sure, uh, especially if they believe that the Raiders can do it. Uh, it just feels like the Raiders are more popular right now. It seems like more people are high on them and, and, and what they can do with the right pieces, right? I mean, almost everyone I've talked to to a T has said, well, if the Raiders can figure out their quarterback position, they could be in a really great position. And, you know, that's not that's not my narrative. That's not me trying to push off some storyline on you. That's just everyone that I've talked to. That's why I bring guys to the to the podcast. That's why some of the conversations that I have on my radio show, I want to bring to the podcast so you can hear it for yourself. So you don't think it's just my ideas and my thoughts and, uh, you know, what I'm trying to, you know, uh, kind of influence you on. No, I, I like you to hear it from other people so you know it's not just me. Um, you know, and then on top of that, the facilities are great. No state income tax. Uh, obviously salary matters, how they're going to get used matters. But I do think Antonio Pierce is a factor to why some want to come play for the silver and black. We'll see if that happens come to fruition next week when free agency opens up. Final text comes from Trey in Arkansas. It says, hey, Q, Trey from the A, Arkansas. Since AP was already hired before Tom Telesco, do you think Mark and AP could have to let the GM candidates know we want to be aggressive for a quarterback in this year's draft? I know trading the farm to move up is an ideal way for most GMs because if you miss, basically you're fired. But if Tom Telesco knew before he got hired this is what they want to do, really it wouldn't be pin pinned on Tom Telesco. I hope they do whatever it takes to get Jane Daniels. Love the shows. You the man, Q. Raiders. That's from Trey in the A. That's Arkansas representing. Thanks so much, Trey, for the text. I appreciate you. And, yeah, that's, again, as I mentioned it earlier in the segment, uh, they definitely – talked about, you know, what are you going to do for the quarterback position? What are you going to do for the quarterback position? That was something that Mark Davis was very adamant about while they were going through the interview process with the the uh, the GMs. So, you know, Tom Telesco, he's found good quarterbacks. Like, he found Justin Herbert, uh, and I know that he kind of fell to his lap, but he had to still make the call, right? I mean, Justin Herbert went six overall, so there was five teams ahead of him that didn't go get Justin Herbert. And I still think Miami uh, is still kicking themselves in their backside for not getting Herbert and going and getting Tua, even though I'm a Tua guy. I just didn't like him coming out of uh, Alabama because he had that hip injury. But we'll see what happens. We'll see if that ends up being the right call or if that ended up being just a call. We'll see. But I, I do believe that, uh, you know, finding the quarterback and going and getting the quarterback and being aggressive to go get the quarterback was definitely something that AP and Mark Davis talked to Tom Telesco and all the GM candidates before Telesco eventually got hired. But, Trey, thanks so much for that text, my man. I do appreciate you. It should be an interesting weekend. Let's see if there's any moving and shaking. Let's see if the silver and black make a trade or attempt to make a trade, or let's see if any other team makes a trade to start, you know, kind of putting themselves in position ahead of free agency, which the, uh, the legal tampering period begins on Monday. So on Monday's show, before legal tampering opens up, we'll actually talk about some of the players that I'm looking at. We'll talk about whatever results happen over the weekend. If any results happen over the weekend, kind of get you ready for the start of free agency. And I think we'll be talking about a lot of new Raiders uh, next week for sure here on the Lockdown Raiders podcast. So until then, Raider Nation, take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Love on your family. Have a fantastic weekend. And most importantly, just win, baby.